The time is uh, 621. This is the business committee meeting. We're located at 201 Bindingwood, the UISD boardroom. Uh, item number one will be actions to review the regular board meeting on May 15, 2019 with recommendations to be made by the business committee. Number one, approval of monthly disbursements. Yes, good evening, Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Molina. The Division of Finance presented you with the disbursements for the month of April. I don't know if at this point you all have any questions. Mr. Molina? No question. Item number two, approval of budget amendments. Yes, sir, the Division of Finance is presenting two budget amendments. <laughs> the first one, we're going to recognize interest earned in the public property finance contractual obligations that we issued, which is just a form of debt to buy capital uh, assets. Um, the FFA programs are starting to pick up with picking up animals for their students, and they needed a new type of trailer that has a ramp to prevent injuries for the, the larger animals to get in and out of the trailer. So we're going to recognize $52,000 in interest and allocate it to each uh, one of the high schools so that they can get a stock trailer. The second budget amendment is... Um, an accounting budget amendment that we have to do according to our guidelines. We're going into a lease of about 4.4 million and uh, per accounting standards, we have to recognize that as an expenditure for the year and the other revenue coming in, in this case, we'll call it other resources of the 4.4. Both of these budget amendments um, do not have an impact on fund balance. Item number three, approval of adopt, adopting of a health insurance resolution. Good evening, board members, uh, Mr. Santos, and members of the audience. My name is Ophelia Dominguez. I'm the director for risk management. And at this time, we would like to present to you the recommendation um, acknowledging financial obligations of the district employee group self-insured health insurance plan uh, based on the Texas Education Code 22.08. And if you notice, uh, this is a resolution, whereas the Board of Trustees acknowledges its obligation under Texas Education Code 22.08, and whereas the Board of Trustees authorizes a self-insurance plan for group medical and prescription insurance for the benefits of district employees, and whereas the district contributes a certain amount towards the medical premium, while the employee pays a difference between the medical premium and the district contribution. Therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of United Independent School District has reviewed the funding of the liability assumed. Any deficit occurring in the group health fund for the school year 2019-2020 will be covered by the district's general operational funds. So the practice stays the same? Yes, basically. <clears throat> same, and, and what this is stating is that for some reason, our expenses are more than, than what we anticipate since it's self-funding, then obviously we're going to be able to cover that for our general fund. Which is good. We've had it for a couple of years. Yes. Well, thank you. Okay. Mr. Molina. No okay. Item number four, approval of property tax refunds for the month of April the 29th, 2019. Good evening, Mr. Molina, Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Santos, members of the audience. We bring to you the, the refunds for the month of April. We have three. It's Zaro Investments for $1,645.27. We have Jordan Family Trust for $5,702.23. And SM Payables LLC for $194.61. Um, at this time, there's no loss of revenue to the district. We, these accounts are paid in full. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Item number five, discussion of possible action to authorize the resolution, the extension of the district depository <coughs> contract for the 2019-2021 biennium. Yes, good afternoon, um, members of the board. We're recommending um, an extension for, to our depository contract with BBA Compass for the 2000. 19 2021 biennial <coughs> beginning september 1st of 2019. this is our first renewal on um, this contract no, 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 no. 
Number six, approval of awarding bids, proposals, and qualifications. We have the following for your consideration. RFP 006-2019, Wolf Bronze Statue for LBJ High School. The recommended vendor is Prestige Art. And then we have 11 renewals for your consideration. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Number seven, consideration and approval of another authorizing the insurance of the United Independent School District Unlimited Tax <coughs> School Building Bond Series 2019, entering a bond purchase agreement and a paying agent register agreement, delegating the, to the certain district administrative staff and officials to author, authorities to approve all final terms of the bonds and other matters related to their two. Yes, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez, Mr. Molina, before we start, uh, obviously I want to introduce Robert Tijerina, who's no stranger to, to United. Uh, Tijerina, Galvani, Lawrence are new financial consultants, and uh, Robert, again, thank you for being here with us today. Mr. Santos, I'd just like to ask if the board could uh, um, entertain seven and eight. The presentation is on both of them. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Good evening, board members and uh, Mr. Santos and staff with the record, Robert Tijerina with us, uh, Tijerina Galvan and Lawrence. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the board members, Mr. Santos and staff for allowing me and my firm the opportunity to represent the district as your financial advisor. Uh, this evening, we'll go over the plan of finance for the unlimited tax school building bond series 2019 and the maintenance tax uh, refunding bond series 2019. If you turn to page three, the proposed uh, 2019 new money financing, this is the last phase. The board, the district has done three financings already from the November 2013 bond election. So this would be the last financing phase to move forward and we're looking at issuing about 88,710,000 of the 88,712,549 dollars authorized but an issued debt. And again, the barn rates have remained low. Uh, we're looking at about 344, 3.44% 3 compared to the last financing, the third phase that we did back in 2017 was 3.60%. So interest rates have dropped over the last couple of years. Uh, fourth bullet point, we see the bond ratings of the district currently with Moody's AA2 and AA-. Uh, and right now we're looking at a pretty much a tax rate increase, the last bullet point, of about 2.23 cents of an increase. Again, it's based on preliminary values. And if you go to uh, page four, this is the estimated tax rate impact analysis. The second column from the left is the sort of uh, preliminary net assessed valuation uh, for 2020. Uh, $17.7 billion. It's an increase of about 6.7%. In about another month and a half, those values will be final and certified. But right now, <coughs> uh, based on indications a few weeks ago, it's about $17.7 billion. Uh, the fifth column from the left is the principal and interest total. We have an interest rate roughly about 3.64%. It's current market rates plus about 25 basis points given that we're a couple of months away from pricing the, the financing. Uh, the delivery date is September the 12th. Again, we're selling about 88.7 million and the pr principal and interest is on the fifth column about $4.9 million for about a 30 year period. If you go to the right hand side, uh, the third column from the right, your INS tax rates uh, currently about 0.21 one seven cents, 21.17 cents. We have an estimated increase of about 2.2 cents, which will go up from 21.17 cents to 23.4 cents. Again, it's preliminary. We won't know until the valuation. We receive it in July and we sell the bonds here in a couple of months when the interest rate is locked in, principal and interest is <coughs> set. Then we'll know the exact tax rate increase uh, that we're expected for next year. If you turn to page uh, six, this is the plan of finance for the refunding bonds. This is not additional debt that the district is looking to move forward with. It's a refunding, which is the same thing that you would do if you're looking to refinance your home. When you refinance your home, your goal is to lower the interest rate, which lower your monthly payments, and that's exactly what the district is gonna do here. And the difference is 
On the first bullet point, it's a PPF CO, it's a public property finance contractual obligation series 2008. This financing was done about 11 years ago. It was uh, fi financing buses, uh, computer equipment, technology. So we're looking to take those bonds and refinance them until lower interest rates. On the refunding summary, we're looking to refinance about 3,690,000 net present valley savings, which is shaded about 343,000. Percentage savings of refunded bonds is 9.307%. So whenever you see 3% present value savings or higher, that's when you want to consider refinancing your debt. The average annual savings is about $72,000 a year. Uh, it's not a typo, but the third column, uh, third row from the bottom, average coupon refunded bonds. Back in 2008, the financing was done for 5.49%. If we're in the market when we sell the bonds here in a couple of uh, months, we hope to lower the interest rate from 5.49% to 1.949%. Again, it's a savings for the district. We're not looking to add any additional debt on the M&O side. Just savings, lower the interest rate, and get an average annual savings for the district. So if you turn to page seven, the next page, the shaded area savings, that is the overall savings a year. And again, this savings is on the maintenance and operation side, not on the interest and sinking fund side. So it'd be on the M&O side, saving roughly from 2020 to 2024, about $72,000 a year. Overall savings, 360,000 a year. If you turn, um, overall savings, 360000 If you turn to page nine, we have the par amount, third column from the left. Those are the principal payments on the remaining maturities from 2020 to 2024. Again, $3,690,000. And we're going from the second column from the left, interest rate 5.49% to 1.59, 1.62 all the way down. The rate difference, that's what we're looking to lower the interest rate on. Again, it's a savings for the district. It's not additional debt. If you turn to page nine, the timetable, we've been working closely with uh, Mr. Santos, Mr. Zuniga, Mr. Flores, Ms. Benavides on the timetable. Uh, these dates can be changed, but right now we're here on the business committee meeting on May the 7th. Uh, this item is moved forward to the board meeting on the 15th. The board considers the plan of finance this exact presentation for us to move forward. If everything is approved next week, we'll price the bonds on July the 16th. Uh, the board meeting will be back on July the 17th to sign the bond purchase agreement. And if everything goes well, we'll close the financing on August the 14th on a Wednesday. And at that closing, that is when the district will receive the bond proceeds to move forward with the projects. On the next page, uh, 10, the working group participants, we have the school district, United Independent School District, Bond Council, Winstead, and also it should include uh, Jay Cruz and Associates. The senior underwriter is Citigroup, co-senior R.W. Baird, the co-managers are J.P. Morgan, Seabird Cisneros, and Stiefel Nicholas and Company. These firms have all represented the district on prior financings in the last five, uh, six years, and especially the, the first three financings of the November th 2013 bond election. They have a lot of experience with the community and with the school district, so we should see no problem whatsoever with the bonds being sold quickly. Uh, underwriters Council would be McCall Parkerson Her uh, Horton, and paying agent registrar would be Wells Fargo. No, it's a lot of information, but if the board members or staff have any questions for me. We're good. Good. Looks good. We're ready. Yes, we're, you know, we want to get this done to be able to sell our final amount on the bond and then continue to, to build. Thank you, board members, Mr. Thank Santos and staff. I really Welcome appreciate the opportunity. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Item number nine, approval of application of low attendance day waiver for all campuses. For Friday, May 3rd, 2019, <coughs> district delay and the start of the school day due to inclement weather, electrical outage, and flooding or road. This one was covered with the instructional department. They approved uh, that instructional Item number committee. 10, uh, approval of employee contract for 2019-2020 school year. <coughs> 
Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Molina, Mr. Santos, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, members of the board, we come before you to recommend to the Board of Trustees uh, approval of employment contracts for 2019-2020. On the cover page, there's just one numerical sequence that I'd like to just point out to the board. At the very bottom of the numerical sequence, it says four of 22. That number should be 23, so we'll make the correction before the next scheduled board meeting. The recommendation that we're making this evening for administrative professional contracts as reflected in the sequence of pages are non-certified professional contracts, probationary contracts, one-year term contracts. For non-administrative or teaching contracts, we're recommending <laughs> probationary contracts and one-year term contracts. I'd like to also share with the board that for teacher contracts, there are a total of 2,080 contracts. For administrative professional, 681 for a total of 2,761 contracts. There are 508 continuing contracts that those are automatically renewed because of the type and condition of contract. So those total to, with those inclusive, 3,369. Would like to also share with the board that we're going to be amending the list of, of uh, contracts that were coming before you. Unfortunately, we <coughs> had one educator at Alexander High School by the name of David Berones that passed away, so his name will be deleted when we present the final uh, list before the Board of Trustees. There will also be a change on a teacher contract for a young lady by the name of Cipriana Gaitan who was promoted to assistant principal at Los Obispos, so her contract will change simply from teaching to that of administration. It will be a probationary contract, but very simply this is the information that will be presented before the Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Item number 11, approval of requests from board members in reference to use of board of trustees discretionary funds for various campuses. Mr. Right. Rodriguez, Mr. Molina, uh, besides the one uh, discretionary fund request that's included in your packet, we have one more to read into the, into the record. It's a request from Mr. Javier Montemayor, and it's for end of year 2018-2019 incentives for Teacher Appreciation Week for the following campuses, nine Troutman, Clark, and Gutierrez Elementary Schools, and Troutman, Troutman sixth grade, Clark and United Middle Schools in the amount of $312. Item B, number one, Finance Division Monthly Financial Report. Yes, sir. Um, for the Division of Finance for the month, we had a cash investment balance of $182 million. $125 million comes from the general fund, which is roughly 70% of the funds. You can see the last three, we're kind of running low on the bond fund, so issuing right now is timely. That's about 22 million. We're going to add about another 88 million to it. Um, you go down to the portfolio yield. The yields have been coming down, but we're hanging in there. We're at 2.51 percent overall in our portfolio, and the current pool rates are at 2.51 percent. You get to the administrative cost ratio. TEA allows us to have 11.05 percent of administration staff, and we're budgeted at 7.98 percent. We're holding strong right now at 8.01 percent. Uh, the finance report, we have revenues that we budgeted $363 million. We've already collected $274 million, which is about 75%, which is good for this time of the year. Our expenditures were below last year's. We only spent 69.9%. Last year around this time, we were spending about 71.43. So we're also holding good with expenditures. When you get to the tax office report, this year's tax collections is 97.57%. Last year at this time, we were at 97.33%. And as of today, the far right column, we're at 97.73%. So we're holding very strong with our tax collections as well. And then um, you have the purchasing report and the grants reports as well in the book. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good. Item number two, Employee Benefits Committee, section renewal for of dental benefits plan. <coughs> Good evening once again, Ophelia Dominguez, uh, Director of Risk Management. The EBC has concluded the renewal for the dental uh, benefit for the employees. This is a, a premium paid 100% by the employees. We did have a 5% increase on the premiums. If you can see on the right hand side, this, the additional premiums for the employee only was an 85 cent increase. Employee plus one, $2.41. On our high plan, we have a 119 additional premium, and employee plus one would be $3.21. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So it's going to go up the difference, uh, and two dollars and forty-one cents, eighty-five cents. That is correct, $2. sir. That is the difference. Basically, one of the main reasons is that we did have new enrollees, so our uh, enrollees increased, so that we saw um, higher premiums or higher claims, and that caused the increase in premiums. And this again, up to every employee, they want to take this particular benefit. They pay. We don't pay a single penny from the district on this one. Yes, sir. Somebody? Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Item number three, dependent verification service. Yes, sir. At this time, uh, we are recommending the district is facilitating a comprehensive evaluation of dependent eligibility for the district self-funded health insurance plan. Uh, this will um, benefit in keeping premiums low and demonstrating that fraud is not acceptable in the district. This would also ensure our plan only covers eligible dependents. Where we want to presently, the plan covers 1,744 dependents. That includes spouses and children. And basically, on this plan, the district's plan is to make sure that all dependents that are covered under the health insurance are truly eligible to be covered under the plan. Uh, at this time, the time frame, we're looking to start notifying all employees in June, early June, mid-June, uh, letting them know that it will start in October of 2019. By uh, February of 2020, we should be able to have results to verify if we do, didn't have any dependents that were not eligible and were being covered under the health insurance. And again, this is recommended by the Employee Benefits Committee. Employee, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I just want to... Which is good. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Any questions? Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the committee also. Item number Absolutely. four, presentation Thank of you. nine months tax collection report. Yes, good evening. Um, the firm of Alarcón and Science will be presenting tonight to you uh, the tax collection report. This is a nine month collection report. We have been working very close with the delinquent tax uh, delinquent tax firm on our collections of delinquent taxes and also the firm has worked very close, closely with the UASD police department in doing tax warrants. So I have tonight Mr. Alberto Alarcón uh, presenting the report. Okay. Good evening Mr. Molina, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, Mr. Santos, uh, staff members. Um, this is our 10th a month uh, tax collection report, um, two months shy of, of completing the, the fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> in uh, in 2000, July 1st of 2017, the, the district turned over to us $3.6 million in, in delinquent taxes for the year 2017. Um, the, that is composed of uh, real property, about 70%, personal property accounts, 26%, uh, and mineral accounts, uh, 4%. Um, <clears throat> the total delinquent tax roll uh, as of July 1st, 2018, was 7.3 million. Uh, there has been an adjustment to the tax roll uh, throughout the year, uh, and the, the the adjustment went down, the tax roll went down, the liquid tax roll went down to $4.9 million. The, <clears throat> the main reason for that adjustment, um, it, it's a large adjustment, but about $2 million of that comes from, uh, we lost, or there was litigation uh, throughout the state in which, uh, involving natural gas compressors, uh, and the Texas Supreme Court ruled for the industry. And basically the ruling said that the uh, natural gas compressors that were in Webb County could not be ta taxed in Webb County. They had to be taxed in the office of the principal office of, of the leasing company. And so we lost uh, the natural gas compressors uh, to the tune of about $2 million. There was also part of that ruling uh, for, the, for the natural gas compressors that were in the county, part of that ruling changed the the method of valuation to where the, the valuation was extremely lowered for, for the industry for natural gas compressors. Um, <clears throat> we, um, in the year we have started seven, or, or we uh, have participated in 749 lawsuits. Um, 
Of those, 568 were, were filed by us, by, by United, uh, which comprises about 76% of the lawsuits filed. The remaining uh, 181 cases were filed by the other taxing entities in which we intervened. Um, we also filed about 440 tax warrants. And with the help of the, of the UISD Police Department, we have been uh, very successful in collecting tax warrants. The uh, police uh, officers come with us to serve the tax warrants, and that is very helpful. The, um, <clears throat> this is a, a, a chart that shows 79% <coughs> that we have collected out of the 4.9 million of the adjusted tax roll we have collected up to date, $3.9 million. And finally, the, um, the last slide uh, shows the, the comparison I didn't have that slide, but uh, <clears throat> personal property taxes, um, $1.9 million was turned over to us for collection, uh, adding those, those, that, that amount to the uh, prior years, uh, we have uh, personal property taxes in the delinquent tax roll of 2.7. And finally, the, the, this is our, our last chart which shows a comparison for the years 2014 forward. Uh, we have collected 79.7, uh, which uh, in part is due to, to losing those, those $2 million for the natural gas compressors. Thank you. Do, that, do you have any questions? Thank you. No, sir. Do we have any public announcements? Any comments? No, sir. No public no. Like, thank everybody. Um, have a good evening and uh, take care.